We're friends, Ambassador Herbert, Ambassador Minton. Well, thank you so much for letting me have this honor of receiving this award on behalf of so many of my colleagues who have worked so hard in order to bring Korea's U.S. relations to what it is today, as has been so aptly described by my minister. I joined the Korean government back in June 1978. I see in your face, it's a long time, right? <laughs> well, yes, it was really a long time. And the first job I happened to work at the foreign ministry, it was, ministry, it was U.S. desk. So I guess maybe it was predestined for me to one day coming to represent Korea to Washington, D.C. And just by coincidence, I just happened to walk in the same office with a foreign minister, as well as Ambassador Kim Young mo who is now the president of COICA, right? What a coincidence, right? And then it is not necessarily Minister Yoon or Ambassador Kim, but there were other senior colleagues of mine who used to tell me this, which is, well, it is rather frustrating. Why? Because look at the Korea's U.S. relations. There is only one single issue, which is how to maintain security alliance between Korea and then the United States. As important as it may be, it is not balanced. It just stands on one leg. When it is as unbalanced as it is, it can topple. That, in fact, was expression of so much frustration coming from some of my senior colleagues. I mind you, not Minister Yoon, not Ambassador Kim, <laughs> but from others. And I was listening to them. And I said to myself, maybe it's a relevant point. After that, I spent 35 years in my service. And then a lot of things happened during those 35 years. And now I know their frustration was a little bit too premature. And let me try to explain to you. In 1980s, then the trade and economic relations between our two countries, it began to boom. It was in, in early 1980s. Later in 1980s, then there was APEC process, architecture, which, is, which has proven itself as so helpful over so many decades. That architecture called APEC is started late in 1980s. And of course, I tell you, it was Minister Yoon who was one of uh, the officials who was most responsible for his success in being launched at that time. And then I look upon APEC, and I, uh, and I tell myself, I wouldn't go into the details, but I tell myself, maybe we can proudly say Korea and United States, we were the co-sponsors of APEC process. So that is one of the reasons why I, uh, in fact, was having such deep respect for Minister Yoon. So that was late 1980s. So President Obama says, rebalancing to Asia, and I tell myself, rebalancing is the right choice of word. Why? Because I think it was already in the late 1980s that the United States has already begun to place focus upon Asia. So I guess President Obama was correct when he said it is rebalancing. Then come early 1980s, 1990s, what happened? 1990s, the, the most important theme we had in the Korean foreign policy was something called North Politic. North Politic. And what did we mean by that? By North Politic, we meant up until that time, we didn't have any diplomatic relations with former Soviet bloc countries. And then it was in, in the early 1990s that we began to expand our network of relationship with former Soviet countries, and then we called it North Politic. And it culminated in 1991 when Korea joined the United Nations. It was the culmination of uh, uh, North Politic in 1991. And who was the responsible official? Minister Yoon in Korea. And in the United States, Daniel Russell in the United States. I'm not joking. There are so many of my colleagues back in Seoul who remind me that without Danny Russell, then Korea's accession to the, to the United Nations could and may have been delayed 
by long period of time. So, Danny, may I ask you to stand up so that you will be appropriately recognized for what you have done? And when I was coming to Washington, D.C., and when I knew that Danny was going to be appointed as Assistant Secretary, then I told myself, well, what a lucky person I am. So here I am this evening. So it was early 1990s. And came late 1990s. What happened in late 1990s? Korea joined OECD. And I was the henchman for Korea's accession to the OECD. It was good, but soon enough, we had Asian financial crisis. And then we couldn't congratulate ourselves over, over this Asian financial crisis. But we came out of that Asian financial crisis without too much difficulty. Why? Because I think we were getting all the help coming from you, including the one coming from Mr. Bill Rose. I see over there. As well as, uh, as, well as Bob Rubin. The other day, it is still my favorite reading. I mean, at the time, I used to work for the Korean mission to the OECD, but I was very anxious in knowing how this issue is being discussed in Washington, D.C., because I knew the real important decision with respect to Asian financial crisis, uh, especially with respect to Korean financial crisis, the real important decision had to be taken in Washington, D.C. So I was very anxious in, in, in knowing what was happening in Washington, D.C. And that is the reason why, even today, I read anything and everything I can, get, I can hold up, which, in fact, would give me additional light upon what was happening in Washington, D.C. at the time. One of such books was a book titled In the, Insert, in the Uncertain World, written by Bob Rubin. I read it from cover to cover. cover. I almost memorized it. So the other day, when I met with Bob Rubin, then I came to find that I knew about the book better than uh, Rubin himself. <laughs> Bob was really impressed. And then he said, well, Mr. Ambassador, I spent three years in writing the book, and I'm really glad that I met somebody, I met somebody who read that book so intensely. And I really read that, read that book intensely. And, and then I asked him, why did you have to spend three years in writing that book? And he said, because there were so many people who were not convinced about why I had to do it. So I wanted to convince them. So I spent so much time in writing that book. And you read it so intensely, I really thank you. So that's what I heard from Mr. Rubin. But, but again, my point is, this cooperation between Korea and then the United States, I think it was a very important factor which helped us to get out, of, get out of Asian financial crisis without too much difficulty in late 1990s. What is happening in the 21st century? Well, of course, the early year of the uh, 21st century, we, in fact, had to witness one of the darkest pages in human history, that is 9-11. And then it soon led to war on terror. And in war on terror, as Minister Yoon suggested, then we were literally, I mean, Korea and the United States, we were literally comrade in arms in Iraq and in Afghanistan throughout the world. And what is happening today? Well, to as learned audience like you, I do not have to go into the de details. But look at what is happening with respect to MEM, Major Economist Meeting. Korea and the United States, we are fighting together in order to fight climate change. G20, again, we are there in order to build premier forum for international economic cooperation. That's the word coming from President Obama. Then there is Nuclear Security Summit, which was started by President Obama, 2010. And then when, where was the second meeting held? Where else but in Seoul? And then again, there is cybersecurity, and then there are a large number of other issues on which we are working together. The point I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make is, look at the width and depth of the relations we have built over the past 35 years, which I've directly witnessed, and then over the past 60 years, which we are celebrating this evening. So that's the reason why I remind you about this frustration 
been felt by some of my senior colleagues back in 1978, when I was very fresh in the Foreign Service, and why I'm saying this evening to all of you, their frustration at the time, I thought it was a, uh, well, maybe point well taken, but by now, I, after 35 years, I have to say, maybe it was premature. But to, to what do we all of these achievements over, over all those years, 35 years for me, and 60 years for the mutual security treaty between Korea and then the United States? I think we owe it to you, citizens of the United States, and citizens of Korea who wish for well for each other. This aspiration to work together, this aspiration to understand, understand each other, this aspiration to work together for the common goal and common prosperity, I think that, in fact, is the single, single most important reason why we are here. And where do all of us, that's to say, the diplomats being honored today, where do we fit into this whole picture? I think we have been foot soldiers in that grand design. We try to reflect that aspiration of our two peoples into concrete policies. We were the foot soldiers who tried very hard in order to implement those practical policies. And that, I think, is where we are. And that is the reason why I feel so proud to be just one of those thousands of foot soldiers. I so feel, feel so proud about it. And I feel so proud to receive this Van Fleet Award on behalf of all of them. Thank you so much.